just to set up, you know, the concept of what we're talking about today, I would like to run through just a few ideas here. K-12 Cybersecurity Act of 2021. In recent surveys, and these do date back some of them to 2020, don't have a security platform to protect their apps. That's 30% of the responses in a survey from the EdTech Leadership Report that came out. I believe that was 2021. 60% have a high level of confidence in the privacy and security of their cloud application. So this means a lot of school districts have moved to the cloud. And so they've chosen well with their vendors of 60% feel good that their vendors are protecting their data and the data of their stakeholders, a cybersecurity gap. And, you know, 2020 pushed everyone to online, whether you liked it or not. And so we really had to uh, also push our K-12 students online. And I'm going to introduce Brett Luttrell. Uh, Brett, thanks for joining today. Brett is a senior level IT uh, architect, strategist, and leader in network and security operations. He we had implemented a lot what uh, I'll kind of go over today, which is, you know, network access control and all that good stuff. And we actually had, you know, a virus outbreak. It came from an internal source. We had already had everything uh, segmented. And it was a really an eye-opener in a sense that, you know, we had kind of done everything right, you know, except for one thing. And so, you know, our high school, which was happened to be the biggest school in the district, ended up getting infected from our adult ed department that was kind of on its own kind of island. And we forgot one ACL, the entire high school got infected with the virus. Fortunately, we had put the ACLs in everywhere else. And so they weren't affected. But the result was it took about two hours to clean about 800 computers, which yeah. was you know kind of amazing in a sense. Amazing. Because it, we put the ACL in, we found almost exact, you know, immediately what the issue was. We put the ACL in and uh, we, at the time, I don't know if it's still around, we had deep freeze and you know it basically yeah. reset yeah. the computer back to gold image as you say so we just rebooted all the computers and you know we were back to normal a suggestion you know that you should probably take into account then this is just something i gleaned over the years is when you kind of looking at security or it strategies or figuring out what you want to do you really have to understand your end goal before you go out and talk to vendors you know if you can't understand you know what you want to do and you rely on the vendors to actually tell you, then obviously you're going to have a lot of stuff that's going to cost a lot of money and it's not going to really do much for you. And so, and then the other thing was security should always be inherent in everything. So it doesn't matter, you know, if you're installing a server, if you're installing, if you're doing a web app, if you're going to the cloud, you really need to evaluate that. And that should be one of the first things you do. And so here, you know, we're looking at single sign-on. And so we've evaluated before we even went out to any vendors why we want to do that. And so that's an important part to understand what you want before you go and talk to any, you know, any vendors out there. I've got uh, three IT uh, school district professionals here and a IT thought leader who's been doing this for many decades. Our next panelist, Eric Conklin. Eric Conklin spent his career in K-12 information technology, having served as IT leader at Northville Public School District and Derby School District in Connecticut. He is currently the director of technology for Brookfield Public Schools in Brookfield, Connecticut. Kind of our uh, end user impact of implementing cybersecurity measures. You know, as, as we've all dealt with, especially in K-12, we have our funded mandates and then we get kind of hit with our unfunded mandates. And here in Connecticut, we kind of had a state supported cybersecurity insurance program that all of a sudden decided to not be funded. We found ourselves all out looking for cybersecurity insurance that we did not budget for. And as we begin to look for cybersecurity insurance and we find out about the gas pipeline hack, the meat packing getting hacked and, and all the big things, we all of a sudden find cybersecurity insurance companies denying many school districts because we're not implementing things like multi-factor authentication. And I'll get into kind of how we deal with the staff on that. You know, among among some of the other requirements, monitoring and security and, and all that. You know, so we find ourselves not only having to pay for cybersecurity insurance at an ever increasing cost, but as we look to implement solutions like multi-factor authentication, 
uh, security operations center, 24-7 monitoring, we have to take into, a fat, uh, into our account our very, very tight, um, and I don't know about all of you, but for me, getting tighter budget. Filiberto worked in the education sector for over 25 years. And for the past 12 years, he served as an IT director for K-12 school districts, supporting students, teachers, and staff. You have to have a plan in place. You have to build your foundation. So one of the things that I encountered was they went out and they bought all these new switches, put an access point in every single classroom. Great technology. I, I think they, they, were, they were on the right path. But one thing that, that was forgotten was your main core. That water treatment plant and the servers were still running when the uh, server 2003. Completely outdated for many years. So sometimes we leave the um, some of the most important things out. And instead of putting out switches and access points, they should have addressed the servers first and, and taking care of that. Not putting any blame or anything, but just saying that sometimes we, we tend to forget some of the little things that we think Yes, we're a small district. We have five or seven servers in the district. It's like, okay, we're going to start moving into the cloud. But what's going to happen before you actually take those steps? You know, there, there's a big room for error in terms of cybersecurity. And, you know, as we all read and, and look at, at the different polls, everybody's tight on budget. So one of the things we, we, we have to analyze is how can we increase our, you know, projects with a little bit of money that we have? And, and and what is it going to take? Obviously, it's going to take a lot of buy-in. And, and we've been very fortunate here that our, our superintendent, our board is always on board when bringing things that is going to hurt or harm the organization in any way, shape, or form. Summative uh, analysis of what we've been talking about and also bringing his extensive experience in the education sector. I'd like to introduce Brian Ellison, who's been an, an educator for over 30 years, with a long tenure of teaching and senior administration in the California Community College System, an experienced academic and creative education entrepreneur. Brian founded a bilingual student recruiting service and an employment enhancement e-learning platform. He also developed a weekly podcast covering education and politics in California and shaped surfboards for surfing enthusiasts in Northern and Southern California. Well, I'm going to tune in, Brian, to your weekly podcast for sure. And I know hopefully you're going to share some of that content on our Campus Consortium website because I know we have a lot of members and would-be members that would be interested in hearing from you. In terms of sort of a summary of, of the discussion, what I found most interesting is that every one of the panelists mentioned one or more elements of organizational change. And if you think about it, IT, without a doubt, is probably one of the major change agents in an educational setting. And, and it's only going to become more pronounced as we move forward in time. So looking at IT and what it can provide an educational facility is huge and significant and will always be that way, I think, moving forward. Thinking about some of the things said, though, you know, from an administrative standpoint, we're usually looking at costs. We're looking at cost return, you know, formulas. We're trying to understand implementation of new ideas or, or what we call organizational change. And we're trying to see how or try to guess on some level how successful that change might be, what steps we need to take. So again, thanks so much for everybody for attending today and taking the time. It's much appreciated. Hope you have a great rest of the day. And again, thanks to all our panelists and our campus consortium team behind the scenes who makes this uh, webinar possible for our K-12 community. Thanks so much. Have a great day. Stay safe, stay healthy. Take care.